He'll be here in a few minutes, hopefully. We might as well give him another hour. Mr. George isn't usually this late, is he? This is normal, Asher. Boom! Look who's decided to show up! Sorry, everyone. I was just putting the finishing touches on the timetable. A better excuse than what it used to be. You can say that again. Right. I have an announcement to make. As you know, our annual winter gala is coming up. Are we having any visitors this year, sir? I'm afraid not, Carlson. However, the Great Central has requested Fletcher to be a guest at their winter gala this year. Oh, wow! I've always wanted to go to the Great Central. You'll love it, Fletcher! I went there during the coal shortage for 2015. They have a double track and a travelling post office demonstrations. Not to mention it's a lengthy railway. Especially now that they're extending it to Nottingham. Oh no. It'll give me a chance to stretch my wheels. Not that this railway isn't long enough for anything like that. Well, we all hope you have a wonderful time, Fletcher. Now, since it's almost Christmas, our railway will be busier than ever. Nelson and Wellington, you two will be especially busy with the Flying Welshman and the Wanderer. Adrian and Martin, I will charge you on these two runs as well. Thank you, sir. We'll be sure to inform Adrian next time we see him. Isaac, Charles, and Ricky, you'll be on demonstration freights for a few days, and Carlson and Corey will be taking over Fletcher's commuter trains for the time being. Am I still in the arts, sir? Jonathan, I have a special job for you. You'll be doing brake van rides at the Bista Museum since Janice is at Middleton for the next two years, so you'll be allocated there from the 4th to the 18th until Jeffrey turns to the Mean Valley Railway next year. Oh, um... Okay, thanks, sir? Let's see what's so special about that. Sorry, Devon, old boy, but I haven't charged you on any trains this week. That's alright, sir. I don't mind having a week off. What about me, sir? Huh? Don't I have any jobs to do this month, or at least a role in the gala? Oh, uh... I don't think I... Uh... Sir, I personally think Ashia deserves a role in the gala. I mean, he's really worked hard since he's been built. Yes, I agree with Carlson. And he's a new build, after all, so just think about how much the railway could benefit from his appearance. But the visitors have been seeing Asher running every day since he was built. They should really be used to it by now. Hmm. I will certainly think about that. In the meantime, Asher, you will assist Corey and Carlson on the commuter services for this month. Yes, thank you, sir. Don't make me regret this. You all know what to do. Have a good day, all. Riley, could you polish me one more time? I want to look extra special for the visitors today. I already polished you enough, Carlson. I'm not the only cleaner on duty today, you know. Yes, but I'm your favourite engine, aren't I? <laughs> of course you are. I guess one more polish couldn't hurt, eh? <laughs> Kiss up. Parker of the J-11 had been visiting the Great Central Railway since the beginning of the year, and had just returned to the railway that day. Devin was in the shed along with CJ who was enjoying a rest after completing another running in test. Hello friends, pleasure being back. Parker! It's so nice to see you again. How was the Great Central? Oh, it was great. I got to meet so many new people and engines. Reminds me of this railway to tell the truth, but nothing beats home, eh? You can say that again. Nothing much has really been happening here. I just got out of an overhaul, Matthew's gone into one this summer, and Ash has been to the Seven Valley for the Autumn Gala, but as far as I know, that's all. Wow, how'd he do? A bit nervous at first, but from what we've heard, he did pretty well. Although he claims he doesn't want to talk about it when we ask him. He's probably still shy about it. It was the first time he's been away from the only place ever known. He's only young after all. Yes, I figured that out as well, but he might as well get used to it. It's going to happen more frequently. Very true. You ought to tell him that. I will, at some point, but... You know what then young engines are like. I'm just hoping he won't be like Carlson when he was in his teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> he won't. I'm sure of it. Ah... <sighs> You get a lovely view of Cecilfield from here. You can see everything that's going on. I wouldn't know. I'm facing the other direction, in case you haven't noticed. Oh, and there's a lot of smoke coming from one of the signals. What? Bloody hell! Uh, the, the, the one from the platform. That's the starter! It's that blasted Riley! 
He hasn't trimmed the wig! <laughs> Better go over and phone the fire brigade then. Don't be cheeky, Parker. Riley! Where is that boy? Riley! Yes, sir? I just got a call from Mr. Remington. He says the signal on platform one is smoking. Did you trim the wick? Yes, father. Well, you couldn't have done it properly if the damn thing's on fire. I did. I used the kitchen scissors. How... <clears throat> How many times have your mother and I told you not to use kitchen utensils for railway-related operations? Sorry, Dad. Shall I go and fix it? Oh, don't bother. You've done enough today. Come on, let's go and check it out. You just stand back and try not to get in the way. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Bought the bacon this morning. Tasted funny. Been paying extra for new packages these past few days. Mr. George strolled out of his office and onto the platform with his son trailing behind him like a shadow. Parker was there as well as Carlson, who had just dropped off his train in the yard. Ah, Mr. George. The fire brigade will be here in about five minutes. Right. We best do anything and everything we can to control this fire. We don't want the nearby shrubbery to be set ablaze. It's only a small fire. It's not like it can get any bigger, can it? That's exactly what we don't want to happen, Riley. If it grows out of control, it could burn down the signal box and anything within the general vicinity. Ah, I see. This is all your fault, son! You don't listen, dear! Yes, Dad. I'm sorry. Now, go and make yourself useful and fetch the fire extinguisher. Yes, sir. On the side of the station next to the entrance of the car park. Alright. In the meantime, you must keep calm and wait for the fire brigade. Do go and try to keep the visitors calm, Mr. Johnson. Tell them everything is under control. There's not much that Carlson and I can do, is there, Mr. George? Unfortunately, no. But I do appreciate you asking, Parker. Good morning, Mr. George. Signal smoking. Yes, Charles, we know. I suspect the wick needs trimming. We know! Lads! The signal's on fire! We, we know! know. Alright, alright. I was only trying to help. Here's a fire extinguisher, Dad. Ah, thank you, son. Now, how do you use... Why don't you press the handle? Oops. Sorry, Carlson. <coughs> Try point to get that out of fire, Mr. George. Alright, that's settled. I'll see all of the staff in my office at 3 o'clock for an emergency meeting, as well as you, son, and tell Snowden and the other cleaners too. Don't forget. Nothing to see here, everyone. Move along. Everything's under control. He doesn't seem too happy, does he? Why would he? I almost burned the signal down. It's all my fault. Oh, cheer up, mate. It isn't entirely your fault. Colson's right. You can always do something to make up for it, Riley. Alright. If you say so. Mr. George wasn't too happy about the starter merely being burnt down. Oh really? How could you tell? One, Parker and I were there, and two, I heard him from the office. He really doesn't have an inside voice. To be fair, that's the most angry I've ever heard him. Yeah, he was pretty cross. Well, let's hope we- Guys! Shh! Look! Out there! Oh look! They're coming towards us! Alright everybody, no one make any sudden sounds or movements. <laughs> oh, great job, Carlson. Where's it go? What? I sneezed. Nice going, Carl. Oh, when am I, am I not allowed to sneeze? We better get some sleep anyways, lads. We've been up later than usual anyways. Yeah, poor Asher. World he fast asleep. Busy day, I presume. He's useful, he is. At least he ain't annoying by the end of the day like he used to be. Mr. George is doing a good job keeping him busy. He's not annoying. He just has a lot of energy that needs to be let out. You were the same way. We all were at some point, Carlson. Yeah, no. 
Looks like Mr. George needs to replace those lights again. But we have the replacements outside the shed. Those big fugly things! You might as well put them in a lighthouse or on cruise ships! Those stupid things are bloody bright. They'll blind you in the minute they're turned on. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to sleep. It's not like you're doing anything special tomorrow anyways, Charles. <laughs> Lay off, Carlson. He's got the right idea anyways. Alright. Uh, good night. Oh, come on. Turn on. Dad, the light's busted again. Oh, not again. Well, let's get out the beams then. Oh God! What the hell? Jesus Christ! What is that? What is happening? No, get those lights off! Off! Maybe we should have warned them that we were going to do that. The two point, get them off! Maybe we should have woken them up first. Turn off the lights! I realise that now. Here we go, ready? Turn off the lights! Alright, alright. Would you rather have me talk to you in the dark then? Of course! Oh, fine. See? Told you! Them pissing lots will blind you! Yes, thank you, Charles. We're well aware of that. Anyways, apologies for the sudden wake-up call, everyone. You'd better be. <coughs> Dad? I can't see you. Use the light from your phone, son. Oh, right. Okay. Rob, did you hear that? My dad said we... I heard him, Riley. I'm not deaf. For the next couple of minutes, Mr. George gave all the engines their duties for the day. When he got to Asher, however... And Asher, you'll be double-heading with Carlson on the 10.15. How come, sir? Because I have a feeling there's going to be more visitors today than we've had all year. Santa specials begin today, don't they, sir? Yes. Yes, indeed. I'll never get tired of them. Sorry, Carlson. It's your turn this time. I understand, sir. Thank you. Better get Asher's fire then, ready, Snowden. You'll be firing him today. All right, we do. Try not to set anything on fire when I'm gone, okay, Riley? Shut up, Rob. Robert Snowden was one of the cleaners on the railway and was a few years older than Riley. Since he had been with the railway for a few years and he had already become a fireman, it was time for him to start training to become a driver. Asher, on the other hand, was a relatively new engine at this time and was still getting used to the correct judgment whenever he braked. Carlson was the trailing engine on this train with Asher acting as the pilot engine. Now Carlson, unlike many of the others, tolerates working alongside him, having once been in Asher's position before. He willingly gave advice throughout the first leg of the trip. The special was on its return journey back to Sutterfield, having just departed Asher's church vale. Now Asher, that stop at Dunfield wasn't too bad. I didn't overshoot, did I? No, 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 not at all. Actually, you were a bit short. The guard coach wasn't all the way on the platform. Shall I try that again? Oh, don't worry about that now. Keep your eyes on where you're going. Where I'm going? I'm on rails. I haven't got a lot of choice about where to go. Can't take a trip across country now, can I? Don't be cheeky. Stow it, you two. Concentrate on the track, Asher. The signal's against us. All right. Robert will take it from here. I will. He will? Yes, you. Oh, this should be fun. Now, Robert, just anticipate the change. Approach it nice and steady. And when it changes, accelerate gently into Setterfield Station. That's it. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. It's not changing. It's still up. Break! Break! Sorry, ass. I'm never trusting you ever again driving me, Robert. Meanwhile, at Sutterfield's shed... Why isn't the Santa special on the platform yet? I heard it coming. Signal's stuck by the looks of it. It's been like that for a while, actually. Yes, and your father hasn't done anything about it, either. Well, I'd best go and tell him then. Won't be long. Asher, stop doing that! I think they know we're here! Well, I can see literally everything that's in front of me, and there's nothing in the way. Can't we just go? What are you playing at? There are rules! Regulations! We can't just go! What's the hold-up? Signal's against us. I suggested we should just go. <laughs> well, you can't just go. I just told him that! We have... No idea what unseen perils lie ahead.
Unseen perils? What unseen perils? Well, um... Uh, are there trains, for example? Are there trains? This is Setterfield, not King's Cross. Well, suppose a cow has wandered onto the line. Put your foot down and the staff will have steak for dinner, I say. <laughs> will you stop playing with your whistle? Dad, the Santa special's waiting outside the signal box. CJ says the signal's faulty, or something like that. Alright, best see to it then. You go on and finish sweeping in the shed. Alright. Looks like you're clear. Stop! Go! Stop! Go? Make your bloody mind up. Okay. It's definitely go. It's definitely go this time. At last. Ricky was also in this shed with CJ and Ethan. He watched his Santa special glide into the platform with Carlson and Asher bickering. Then saw his crew strolling up to him. Come on, Ricky, we've got a train to pull. Uh, another demonstration goods, I bet. Well, kind of. What do you mean? We're char on the two-coach train with a milk tanker. Enthusiast request. A typical branch line train, basically. Like what you... Uh, a typical branch line train, basically. Like what it used to be back in the day. Ah. Well, at least there's something good in that. I haven't pulled a passenger train since January. Yes, well, I wonder how our old pal Jonathan is getting on about Mr. North. I wish Janice or Jeff would come back sometime soon. I'm not cut out for this kind of work. Moving engines and such, in and out, here and there. What's even the point of this movement? How would I know? Wait, what was the question again? I haven't been paying attention. Sorry, mate. Oh, it's alright, Edmund. Of course he wasn't paying attention. Been catching his usual 40 winks, he has. Shut it, you two! Leave the poor hole alone! He's been suffering enough being next to you for the past eight months! You know, little Nicky, I think Chris and I enjoyed things better when you were still in the workshop being restored. At least I'll be staying in a year and a half. Unlike you, you two will be stuck here for eternity. Oh, good for you. What do you want? A medal? Yeah. Is enough of your class running around? Oh, stay out of it, Preston. Well, it just goes to show how useful our design is. You of all engines, Preston, you should know about that, hmm? 863, was it not? J Jonathan, please don't leave me next to these three. I beg you. They're nightmares. You'll be fine, Ed. Don't worry. Just turn them out. I do. It doesn't work always. They find ways to get my attention sometimes. I don't blame you, Edmund, old boy. A good thing I... Yes! We know! You're being overhauled next summer. Change the record. Well, really. <sighs> How's things, Jonathan? Alright, I guess. Alright. What? Oh, is it boring you? <laughs> I don't blame you if it was... No. Not necessarily. It's just, well... Um... Uh... Yeah, it is. <laughs> Figured that. W what's going on here? Curator wanted everyone to be moved around. I don't know why. We like being in different places every now and then. It gets boring when you're stuck in one place for a while. You don't say. <coughs> well, uh, have fun with that. See you later. Gee, thanks, mate.
As per usual, the railway wasn't open on Wednesday. However, there was a big snowstorm that night, and when the engines woke up the next morning, they found that there was more snow on the ground than there were the previous two days. Carlson was having none of it. You've got to be kidding me! What? It's only snow! Besides, it isn't snowing as much as it did on Tuesday. Yes, but it's colder than it was that day. It's winter, Carlson. It's supposed to be cold. Right, alright. I'll just go out and check to see how exactly cold it is today, eh? Blimey, Carlson. I didn't know you were half Groundhog. Hmm. It's not that... Uh, you know what? I think I'll stay here for today. Typical. He sees a shadow and he runs back into his little hole. <laughs> no? Okay then. Anyways, it's your turn for the Santa specials this year, Carson. <laughs> Please. I've got better things to do other than babysitting. Babysitting? Simmer down, you two. In fact, it's Charles's turn to, um... Babysit. Today. <laughs> you what? Yep. I've chartered you and Ash on the 905 Santa special today. Why? What? Just... Why? Oh, and Asher, Robert's driving today, so good luck. Yay. I will be honest, at least I'm not staying here all bloody day. Yeah, it's boring not doing anything all day, isn't it? Well, that... And I won't be treated like a museum piece at the NRM. <laughs> I bet you missed that, didn't you, Charles? Please. The only thing I get annoyed about now is when the staff use me as a bloody bench. What? I mean, sure Riley is a pain in the boiler sometimes, but he's not that bad. He's still young after all, even if he does some really questionable things. You're right there. My driver found that kid asleep in my tender one morning. Ah uh, yes, I remember that day. That was hilarious. Hey, I'm right here. I know. And for the record, father locked me out so I had no choice but to come here. The cold space in your tender just so happened to be big enough. Big, big, big enough? B big enough? How many people can fit in my tender? Just be thankful you don't have a Stania tender. <laughs> I heard that. Piss off. Charles, let's go. When do you get out there? Who knows? Just go, Charles. You don't want to make your passengers late. All right. As soon as Charles left the shed, Robert Snowden walked in, looking very tired. Robert? You alright? Why are you so late? Yeah, I'm fine. Just tired. The arm on my phone wouldn't work. <sighs> Sorry. Well, Mr. George put you on Asher today. On the Santa special with Charles. It is passing in ten minutes. Oh, shit. Where's my shovel? Better hurry, lad. Oh, trust me. I will. Bloody hell. Where's Snowden off to in such a rush? Uh, trying to catch his train. <laughs> what are you doing down here, Jonathan? My duties up at Pista are done, so I'm back down here. On the Trevor's and branch, the snow had blanketed the entire line, which meant Trevor had to work with a snowplow. However, since the arrival of Bonnie to the branch, it has allowed the traffic to move much smoother with him usually taking up clearing the snow, and with a second hand allowed for opportunities to be taken. I'm telling you, Bonnie, you've got to go and clear the tracks. I pull the daily commuter trains. My passengers are depending on me. Do you want me to get stuck in the snow? No way! Well, one of you is going, and I won't take no for an answer. Oh, Mr. George! How long have you been there? Never mind that. Bonnie, you'll be clearing the line. As expected, Bonnie cleared the line for Trevor and his commuter. Trevor's timetable had been slightly altered so that he could bring up a special from Setterfield. The special was simply a train full of food and drinks and other things for the residents of the towns on the branch line, as many of them aren't able to venture into the big cities to buy a majority of the goods that Trevor brings every winter. This small special, yep. Be careful though, Driver says there'll be another snowstorm coming later. Don't worry, snow's never bothered me. Jonathan was right. No sooner had Trevor left Setterfield, snow began to fall. Heavily. 
The storm was a strange one that no one had seen before. It would snow for a few minutes, stop, then start again. Due to this, the train had been halted at Ashcroft. Oh, this is stupid! I'm in charge of an important train! I can't stay here! Especially while it's snowing. Sorry, old boy, but we've tried everything. Station Master says we can't go any further. <laughs> We're gonna get snowed in if we stay here. He's an idiot. Station Master's orders. Well, I don't like it. Trevor was moved to the siding near the station and watched as the other trains came and went dropping off passengers. His crew, warm and snug in his cab, were busy cooking leftover breakfast. The smell of bacon and eggs made Trevor turn his nose up in disgust. Cooking in my cab! The nerve of them. Meanwhile at Treverton, Barney had been idling in the shed waiting for Trevor. When he noticed that he had been gone for a lengthy amount of time, he became worried. Where's Trevor? Beats me. Has he not arrived? And blimey, he's over two hours late! Shall we go and search for him? He could be snowed in! Well, we're not supposed to be out there in that sort of weather, but I guess it couldn't hurt bending the rules. Especially when it's for a good cause! Don't you do have anything better to do than turn me into your mobile oven? Well, we're hungry. Yeah, it's not our fault. Ugh, I guess. Oh! Hello, Mr. Dumgreen. Fancy seeing you in this weather. Yeah, what are you doing out there, Arlo? All trains are cancelled for the rest of the day. Yeah, Station Master's just told me that. I just thought I'd come down to the station just to hang out, you know? Anyways, roads are kind of iced up, so my dad won't be able to come get me for a while. <sighs> I think I better go back inside where it's warm, so I don't catch anything. See ya. Goodbye. Take care, mate. Good news, you lot. A pack of tanks coming down to rescue you. Oh, great. I'm about to be stowed by a male engine with a female's name. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, don't be such an old fusspod, Trevor. At least we don't have to stay here for the night. Hmm. I guess you're right. Trevor! Thank goodness you're okay. You know, you don't have to go through all this, mate. Yeah, well. What are your friends for? Besides, we still have to get this train to Trevor's end. Even though I'm two hours and a half late with my special, cold and alone on a siding, it really warms me up to be in the company of a friend like you.